Good morning, boys and girls. I'm at school this morning to do the lesson in the playhouse, and I am making this mommy robin very upset. Do you hear how she's sounding the alarm? Someone is near her nest, and that someone is me. Oh, she's not happy. I think this mommy robin has laid a nest. One of these two nests is hers in our playhouse, and she does not like me in here. But I am going to do the lesson in the playhouse today because it's so windy outside. So hopefully we can do this quickly so Mommy Robin will not be too angry at me. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, May the 15th, and I'm here at school on the playground to do our bird in flight experiment. Before we do our experiment, I wanted to read a little bit about um, birds in flight and read about <clears throat> their feathers, since that's a pretty important part of what makes them fly. Our feathered friends. Birds are the only animals with feathers. I'll say that one more time because it's really interesting. Birds are the only animal with feathers. A large bird, such as a swan, might have more than 25,000 feathers. And even a tiny little hummingbird has almost 1,000. So with all those feathers on a bird's body, it makes you wonder, well, are all the feathers the same? And if you remember from looking at, um, wow, I just saw a huge blue heron fly into the tree on our playground. And if I see it again, I'm going to stop so that we can go and look at it. But if you remember yesterday from looking at the yellow-bellied sapsucker, do you remember all the different color feathers that that yellow-bellied sapsucker had on its body? And why do you think that the feathers had to be different colors? Why do you think, look at this picture of a kestrel. Why do you think that the bird needs to have so many different shapes and sizes of feathers? What about the difference in feathers might help it in flight. So think about that for a few minutes. Feathers do keep birds warm and they help keep birds dry. They are very light, which makes it easy for the birds to stay in the air, stay in flight. So a bird stays in the air by flapping its wings up and down. As the feathers pull its wings down, the feathers push against the air. It's a great day for this lesson because it's windy. So you can see how the wind is moving the air around. And when a bird is flying, its feathers are pushing against the air that makes the wind. The feathers push against the air and it moves the bird up and forward. I'm still looking for that heron. <laughs> Some birds can also fly like airplanes. Airplanes use the force of the air to keep them in flight. This type of flight uses much less energy because the birds rarely flap their wings. Have you ever noticed how an airplane can fly? But an airplane doesn't flap its wings up and down. An airplane soars just like how you might look in the sky and see birds soaring. How can they stay up there if they're not flapping their wings back and forth? 
how can an airplane stay up there without its flapping its wings? Hmm. As air flows faster over the curved surface of the wing and slower underneath, so think about a bird's wing, fast air is going on top of it and slow air is going underneath it. All right, same as a um, airplane. It creates a force, so fast and slow. And here in the middle is the wing. It creates a force that presses against each other and that helps the bird lift up into the sky. This upward force is called lift. Pretty interesting. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our experiment. And yesterday I had told you about a couple of things you needed for our um, bird balloon experiment. The only thing I forgot to tell you was a clip. So take a few seconds now and go and find a clip somewhere in your house. All right, so for our experiment, you need a balloon, tape, a Sharpie marker if you want to draw a face on your bird, a clip, and then I have found some feathers. I have to hold them because it's so windy. Or you might be able to find a leaf somewhere. So the first step is going to be to blow up your balloon, but do not tie a knot in it. Clip it with your clip. Okay. Once you have your balloon blown up, what I didn't tell you is that you might need to twist the balloon, don't tie a knot in it, is what I meant to say. Twist your balloon and then clip it with your clothespin so that the air still is held inside, but it's going to be able to come out really fast when you release it, all right? Now, if this is the fun part. Okay, take your marker and you can decorate your bird. with some eyes or a beak. And then you want to start to tape on your feathers or your leaves, is if that's what you're using as feathers, if you don't have um, feathers at your house, which is just fine. Go on and start taping those to the sides of your bird. So one thing you might do, and I, I meant to tell you this first, after you get your balloon blown up, and twisted and then clipped and a face drawn on. <clears throat> you might do this part um, first. My feathers are blowing away, good grief. <laughs> See how, what happens when you just release the balloon without the feathers and see how the balloon takes off, right? So I'm getting ready to launch my bird without the feathers and let's watch and see how it flies without feathers. <laughs> you really couldn't see that. Okay, so I have my bird feathers taped onto the side. And so since it's gonna be kind of hard to video where my balloon is going, where my bird balloon is going when I release it, um, I'm gonna let that part be up to you. Um, but do this a couple of times. And here are the different, um, the different experiments to run. How does your balloon fly without feathers? How does your bird balloon fly with feathers? Does it fly different or does it fly the same? How does your bird balloon fly when you add more feathers onto it? Does that help the bird balloon fly higher and lift more or does it weigh it down more? So experiment with different amounts of feathers, experiment with feathers and leaves, different kinds of feathers, um, and see which combination gives your bird balloon the best lift. Here we go, one, two, three. <laughs> and have fun with this. I'd like to hear how they go. Um, I'm gonna push pause now and go see if I can find that blue heron. Um, and we'll end the lesson today um, doing a little quiet bird watching. 
So even though I could not find the great blue heron that I saw during our lesson, I did manage to spot this sweet little morning dove sitting on her nest in our playhouse. So I have counted three nests in our playhouse on the playground. This must be a great nesting site for birds, probably because no one has been on the playground in such a long time. Whoop, there's Mommy Robin. She's waiting for me to leave. Can you tell if she has something in her mouth? All right. I think that I'm going to leave the mommies here alone. We've got doves and we've got robins who are living in our playhouse right now. I'm going to leave the playhouse alone so that they can do their jobs. I bet there are lots of mommy birds doing the same thing around your house today. Today would be a fun day to go bird watching, to go birding. Try to find some mommy birds hard at work taking care of their, um, their babies and have a good weekend.